Frazier, take me to step one. When you first heard that there's a movie called Hustle and Flow on the way, and they need some funk for this soundtrack. Well, I didn't. I heard of the movie first, you know, uh, through Craig Brewer, um, uh-huh. the uh, director from Memphis. Uh, he done yeah. a lot, of, like uh, Coming to America too. A lot of people don't, uh, a lot of other stuff. Mm-hmm. Big director. Um, they was working on him and John Singleton. Rest in peace, John Singleton. Yes, sir. Um, when I heard about it, it was it was love. You know what I'm saying? It was a good look for Memphis. Period. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was that we everybody was behind it. You know, we was all for it and. Before they, they at first they was just getting songs from artists in Memphis to put in the movie. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's how I started. And I didn't know that they were actually taking original songs to write for the movie. And yeah. I think that's when I got that chance. Paul and Juicy needed a song for, I guess, you know, it turned out to be as hard I heard for a pimp, John Singleton, and uh, Craig Brewer was at Hypnotized Minds. And like I say, Pat, Pat was in prison. Mm. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. This might sound crazy, but Project Pat being in prison that four years was the biggest blessing in my life. I don't know how that sound mm-hmm. because it gave me my chance to shine. And for them to, it probably would have never happened this way yeah. if he wouldn't have been in prison. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because they, they, they gave him time to focus on me. Yeah. And it was like what I could do. But, uh, like I said, uh, John Singleton, well, Paul called me to the studio because I'm pretty sure Pat would have got the job writing about a pimp easily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. That's just that's, that's, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. And um, I was called to the studio, um, and they was telling me what Hustle & Flow was about mm-hmm. before it had came out. And it was like John Singleton was telling me um, it was about a pimp, struggling pimp, inspiring. He was trying to be an inspiring rapper. He had two girls. Which is Taraji and the other girl. One was pregnant and he was going through a hard time. So by me hearing it, it translated like, okay, as a pimp and it's hard for him. Wow. All right, so I was like, the name of the song need to be as hard out here for a pimp. Hard <laughs> That's simple. That's simple. Come on. And when John Singer was like, he said, uh, I remember him looking at me, he said, uh, he said, What you say? I said, the name of the song need to be as hard out here for a pimp. He said, That's it. Woo. And when he said that's it, that's when the verses came in. It, it maybe took me, I ran through them two verses, um, maybe 45, 30, 45 minutes. Mm. And you got the product as hard I heard for a pimp, and, and that's how it happened. Okay, when you heard them re-recorded for the movie, though, man, what was I it? I saw it in the movie. Yeah. I saw it. They let me see what they did with it. And, yeah. man, that shit was, I was crying in the inside like <laughs> Damn, y'all took what something I did and made it like, it really brought tears to my eyes. Yeah. I'm just seeing my work come alive like that. And I didn't really know they was going to do it like that. My God. And the, this coming from uh, the governors. Yeah. The governors is the men that, uh, it's like a round table of hard hitters at the Oscars the Academy Awards that call the shots yeah. for what they sit and look at what, how stuff get nominated, they choose it, they, they go through it one by one, and they say, they, they told me why they picked it. Mm. They were like, we was looking at it, and it was just so perfect for the movie. Mm. They couldn't do nothing but, we couldn't do nothing but nominate it. And coming from them, that fucked me up, <laughs> That fucked me up, I was like, wow. So, you can imagine all the stuff that's going on in my head from where I'm coming from, yeah. to how it happened to, how people changed up on me. It's all this in within a week. So let me ask you something. Why, why do you think that, and now that I'm, I'm listening to this right here, because I didn't know a lot of that. Yeah. You know, I just, I see y'all all on 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 uh, Instagram and stuff. Right, right, right. And you hide that shit. It's like, it like y'all yeah, all yeah, tight. Man, you know, but now I, that try I'm, not to, I try not to trip. You know what I'm saying? That's just, that's just, that's, that's God, you know, keeping me sane. You know what I'm saying? I why, try not to. Why do you think that now, now that I reflect on this, why do you think a lot of artists have left uh, Juicy and, and Paul uh, from when Boo? Because back in the day, I was like, why Boo? Why Boo left? It was, like, why? It was probably everybody own personal reasons. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like my reason. They probably saw some a flaw in some that was going on with them, within them and. Paul and Jay. Right. It was a lot of different reasons, but it, it wasn't, everything wasn't for the same reason, so I, I really don't know 
okay. why certain people left. They might have felt played in a part they did or whatever. Right. But I can only speak on me for is why I left. Right. You know what I'm saying? It, it used to happen a lot for us, the artists. So mm-hmm. they did raise a red flag. Like, you know what I'm saying, why? But when you in it, you really ain't paying attention to the, you know what I'm saying? Because right. you ain't in nobody's business like that. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. You trying to... Handle yours. Yeah. You know what right. I'm saying? And I don't know. So, uh, so, so, phrase, so, I mean, from here, one thing they can't take away from you is you, you did the damn song. Right, right. So, you can't take that uh, how do, how do, how do, I got my hard work. You, absolutely. So, how do we, how do we, you know, monopolize on it? Because, because nothing dies. You can still, you did it. See, it was, it was so much that I, like, I was so version to the situation to where, I, man, I'm coming from Greenbrier, Memphis. I ain't never done no shit like this. I don't even know what's going on, but, if my life and career in your hands and you know I really don't know what's going on, help me. Don't help me fall. Like, like teach me. School me. Take care of me. Nigga, I'm trusting you with my life. You did a, that's a million dollar worth of stuff. And, and I'm, and I'm going to say this to you, be how I'm glad you said that. Because yeah. I hear artists all the time, like after they only got signed. And I'm just going to throw a name out there, but I ain't saying this. Say, for instance, let's just say cash money. Right. Let's just say if a Lil Wayne was 12 or 13 right. or juvenile was this age, then you go sign these boys at 14 and 15. And you already you. know what the game is yeah. and what's going on. So if a lot of people come back and say, you know, artists might, you know, 10 years later say, well, so and so owe me $100 million or $50 million. You you gonna have half the public gonna say, "Well, you knew what you were saying, and you didn't. You shouldn't have did this, but woo." But a lot of times, you don't know what you was saying. You, really you don't, don't know what was going on. And when you Especially mess with a click of niggas, you expect just like what you said, Fraser. Nigga, just take care of me. Yeah, that's yep. all I'm. I ain't asking for. What my choice? Yeah, yeah, you asking for just, just what I work for? Just pay, give me food. Take care of what I work for. Right. That's all I'm asking. I ain't right. asking for no. But I did it. You I'm did sorry it. if it's something bigger than what you thought could happen. I, that ain't my fault. Blame God. Blame right. God for that. Right. But it happened. So what you gonna do about it? You gonna let me drown or swim? Yeah. If you if I'm signed to you, I'm gonna let you swim. Absolutely. I ain't Absolutely. gonna let nobody. Man, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna make sure you straight. Right. Right. Man, I done everything from the heart, and 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 it, I ain't gonna say for me. I did it for the team, right? And and you got yeah. family and stuff. Yeah. You know that 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 that, you, that that we have plans on as an artist. I'm talking yeah. to you as an artist now. We have plans when we make these records that people beat us out of, and and it ain't just about me. It was about my son, my daughter, right, my right, mama. Right. My you, you understand what I'm saying? So when a, when a person that's if I if I had signed up, phrase if you had signed directly to let's just say Eris or something, they got you some you know white folks or something. You can man, you can eat that, but when it come from your partners, I'm gonna say this too. It had a lot to do with uh, Sony, who they were signed to at the time, mm. and when Sony was so focused on them that I was just. When they was at the table, I'm in the room where where, where Maceo is. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm I'm somewhere totally off. They handling, you know. And but I ain't tripping. I understand because that's who y'all invested in. Three six. Y'all ain't got nothing to do with me. But my problem is Paul and Jay. Mm-hmm. Y'all gonna let let y'all even if y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Then y'all gonna let them just throw me in the in the, in the a way like that. Like forgive him. We gonna make sure y'all, you know what I'm saying? I understand I'm not on Sony Columbia, but I'm signed to you niggas. Your album should have been the first album out. Man, when, listen, you, when, right. when you won at Oscar, that's the that's first album should have came Man, out. I would have pulled out the best production in the world for me. But that didn't happen. They waited three, four years after that before they threw me out of the album. Just threw it out. I, I had to, if the album, the key mine, my last album with Hypnotize, I had to do the album and record. Right, oh, I had to do all this in three days. They forced that album on me. That was the product. I ain't gonna say the worst album in the world for me, but that was the worst album to me that I ever recorded with them because I was rushed and that wasn't my real work. Right. And plus it was at a time where I didn't even give a fuck no more. Mm. I'm just being honest. I was just ready to get this shit over with because I see what it is. When you start seeing what it is, you can't you can't see the lie in there because it is what it is. Like 
Start taking stuff for what it is, and, and you'll get by a lot of shit. Do you still talk to T Rock and and Boo? Man, and of course, T Rock, man, man, T Rock just we we working on album collab album together. We got a collab album right. out back today, that's so right. I still mess with T Rock. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people reasons for leaving is is different from mine, but we all had the same common good connection for is man, one a lot of shit went straight. Right. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is, and I don't care how anybody will feel about it. Because I know my truth, and I know Absolutely. I know what it is and what it ain't. You know what I'm saying? I know my how genuine I am when it comes to people. I, you know what I'm saying? I would take a bullet for. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like I feel like I feel like my y'all music saved my life. Right. I'm gonna say that y'all took me from nothing to something. I appreciated that, but don't help me fall with with something that y'all asked me to do. And I succeeded, and then y'all turned y'all back on me. You know what I'm saying? Y'all turned y'all back on me. They, They did. Yeah, they did.